and welcome to another Lawn Fawn video. Today we are so excited to introduce our brand new stamp set, Bubbles of Joy, and its coordinating dies. We're also going to be introducing products that go great with the stamp set and for other things too, and that is our bubble background stencils, and also our bubble border die. In this video, we're gonna check out all of these products and make three cards with them. But first off, we're gonna stamp out the Bubbles of Joy stamp set, and I am in love with the stamp set. Our cute little mice are at it again, and this time they are blowing bubbles. So we have mice in all these different styles. We have the running mouse, the sitting mouse, the cute little tiny baby mouse reaching for bubbles. We have a mouse that's perfect for going on top of bubbles, and a sitting mouse as well. And then two different styles of bubble wands, one with the bubble coming out of it, and one in a heart shape. Then we have the little bubble solution bottle and then these tiny little images you can use on their own or actually layer on top of the bottle. And then we have all of these different size bubbles. We have our big bubble, the smaller size bubble, a really cool bubble trail, then two bubbles together, a little tiny bubble, and of course popped bubbles too in two different sizes. We also have heart-shaped bubbles to go along with that heart-shaped wand. We have an individual heart and then the trail of hearts as well. We also have a shine mark that you can add to the bubble or not. So you can see you can layer it right on there. I'm just gonna stamp it off to the side now, but you can see how fun that is and you can put it anywhere along the bubble to kind of get a cool shine look in a cartoon style. We also have the word pop, which is perfect for those little pops and it even fits in the bubble solution bottle as well. And then we have the best sentiments in this set. We have, I'm blown away by your kindness. May your day be filled with bursts of joy. I love that with the popped bubbles. We have when life gives you troubles, blow bubbles. We have I'm so happy you're in my bubble, which goes perfectly with our times right now, right? It's a pretty cute card. And then you can also do I'm so happy to be with you. So you can use the phrase in two different ways. And then we have the sky's the limit. And I really love that for graduation cards. So I love that this stamp set can be used for anything. Now we're gonna use Copic markers to add some color to these fun images. And for these mice, I'm gonna be using all different shades of brown for them. So I love looking at all the markers I have and just trying out different shades to see what color mice are gonna be perfect for my card. Now these little mice are so cute and I'm sure you recognize them from other sets like our Crazy Antics set or Dandy Day. All of these mice mix together perfectly. So you can mix and match all of these together. So in the Dandy Day set, there's some really great mice that go along with the blowing bubbles as well, especially one that's perfect for popping the bubbles. So I love that you can mix and match these mice all together if you have some of the other sets. You can see here that I like to lay down my lightest marker first. That's for two reasons. One, I feel like my markers blend a little bit together when the paper's already wet. And two, it helps me try out where I wanna have my darker areas or my shadow areas. So I kind of put that down and then I see if I like it before I commit to putting that really dark marker over it. And it's always a great way to kind of decide how my coloring is gonna go before I actually go for it. So here you can see I'm gonna do the same thing, kind of laying down that marker, seeing how I like it. And then now I feel like I can put my dark marker down then go into my medium and then I can blend out into the light and I always like having the little top of his face lighter like the sun's hitting this face I think it's so cute now I really love using purples and blues with the wands because I love doing purples and blues for my bubbles. So I'm gonna be showing you some different ways of coloring in these bubbles today. Uh, so I'll show you some simpler ways and some more complicated ways. Right now we're just gonna add some color to the bubble solution bottles. I'm using some purple for the lid and then the light blue for the bottle. For my large bubble, I wanna give it an iridescent look and I'm gonna do that by having a very light pink and a very light purple marker on kind of the two outside edges of the bubble. And then I'm blending those in with my lighter BG blue green markers. And you can see how it gives it a cool iridescent look. And I'm gonna be repeating the same idea on these other bubbles. So you'll see I'm laying down the light pink, the light purple, then kind of a little bit of a darker of the blue green and then out into the lightest blue green. And there's kind of no wrong way to do this. Whatever markers you have, pick the lightest purple and the lightest pink. I don't have all the markers. I just picked the lightest ones I had. And then your lightest kind of turquoisey blue green colors, and then just blend them out. A lot of times I'll use the colorless blender at the very end, either in the center or on the outside edge of the bubble to leave that area more white and kind of blend out that light turquoisey color into the white. 
Now here are some other ideas for coloring in these bubbles. I love the idea of making them rainbow. So once again, I picked out my lightest shades that I had in the rainbow order. Then I put them around the edges of the bubble. I took that C00, once again, any light gray marker, and I went over it in the light gray to kind of dull the colors out. And then I used my colorless blender to blend them in toward the center. I think this looks so pretty and it is so much fun to do. Now for this one, we're gonna do it in the same style that we did earlier on that full sheet of stamped images. We have the light pink, the light purple, then I'm gonna have my darker blue and then my kind of lighter blue and I'm blending it out with the colorless blender, but I didn't love how it was so blank in the center, so I kind of just put some streaks of my lightest blue and I thought that looked really cool. Now for our next bubble, I'm gonna do the easiest possible way. I'm taking my lightest blue green marker. I'm just lining the inside of that black line. Then I'm gonna take my colorless blender and just blend that out and that's it. So quick and easy and it looks really good too. So if you don't have a lot of time, that's a quick and easy option. Now the other thing you can do is actually make these bubbles more bold with darker colors. So you can see I'm kind of blending it out dark on one side, light to the other. I put a little purple along the edge and I got much darker blue green marker. And so here you can see some more versions when I was just kind of playing around, maybe thicker rainbow, darker colors on the edges. There's so many cool things you can do. Now I wanted to show you one more trick. This is our brand new bubble stencil and we're gonna be highlighting this in a video two days from now, but I wanted to show you something cool about it. One of the bubbles in the bubble stencil just happens to line up with the size of the bubble in the Bubbles of Joy stamp set. So this makes for quick and easy coloring. So what you do is you just layer it right over the bubble. You can see right along that inside black line. I'm gonna take some post-its here and I'm just gonna kind of mask off the other bubbles on there because I'm, I'm never very careful with my blender brushes. So I like putting post-its there to just kind of protect the area. Here I'm taking some Kitty Pool ink, which is the perfect bubble color, and very lightly just kind of inking over this stencil, keeping it darker to one side. I'm gonna lift it up, and how cool is that? It's a colored in bubble. So I'm gonna show you some other kind of cool ways that I was practicing and just playing around with coloring in these bubbles. So if you're not a marker person, this is a great way to color in a large area by using this bubble stencil. So there you can see I put kind of a darker edge on the outside edge of the bubble. In this case, I'm filling in the entire bubble with that light blue color and now I'm going to bring in ballet zippers which is a light pink so the same idea that we did with the markers we're going to do with the ink so I'm just going to bring that pink on the edge and it's going to make it look kind of cool and iridescent. Now for my next bubble, I am going to add some purple in now. So this is fresh lavender. So I'm adding some purple and some pink, just once again, like we did with our markers. And then we're gonna take that kitty pool color and just go over the whole thing. And I think that looks really, really pretty. That one's actually my very favorite one. Now here we're gonna take some more kitty pool ink. And once again, I'm just practicing and playing around and I'm gonna die cut these all out because that means that I'll have a ton of bubbles to play around with later on different cards. So it's really fun to just play around and see what kind of looks you get. On that one, I had some kitty pool ink on one side and a bunch of pink on the other. And I'm gonna do kind of a similar thing again, just adding some pink to that edge and keeping it really nice and light and white towards the center and then adding a little purple for a little pizzazz there. And now you can see all all of those different bubbles. They're all unique and all so perfect. And then here's a comparison to ones colored with markers on the left and colored in with the stencil and ink on the right. These are the coordinating dies which you can bend apart at the tabs or use your wire snips to separate. Next, we're gonna take those dies and line them up with our stamped images. We're gonna hold them in place with some low tack tape. I like to use post-it note tape. Then we're gonna run them all through the die cut machine and we're gonna have perfectly cut out images. I just love looking at those cute little tiny mice. And here's a look at all of the images from the Bubbles of Joy stamp set. And here you can see how they can mix and match together. So that guy can hold the little bubble wand and have all these bubbles coming out of his trail. I love this little sitting one holding the bubble wand as well. There we've got him with his heart-shaped wand and he can have art-shaped bubbles. That guy there is perfect on top of the bubble and that little sitting guy can either sit on his own or sit inside the bubble, which I think is so cute and adorable. And then here's a look at all those different bubbles that we were playing around with using the simple coloring method with just the little ink around the inside edges. 
Here we did a little more interesting coloring. Now we did rainbow. Here's a darker color. And then these two were those ink blood and woods that we used with the stencil. And then here's a look at that cute little mice. He's on the rainbow bubble, which I think looks so sweet. And then this guy can sit inside. You can play around with different bubbles from different sets. The superstar mouse fits really well in these bubbles. And that little tiny guy is really cute running in the bubble as well. This is the new bubble border die, and there are two parts to it. We have the top part that creates kind of the solid back piece for the bubbles. I also think it's just a really cool look. It'd be kind of cool as clouds as well. And then we have the bubble piece that can layer on top of it. So you can see here, you can put that right on top, and then the base piece is going to color in the shine marks. So I'm going to use some craft cardstock here just so that there's a bigger contrast, and there you can see how cool that is. I really like using a light purple cardstock behind to give it kind of a light purple in the shine marks mark area. I also love cutting these out of vellum, both normal vellum and pearlescent vellum. They look so beautiful. They also look really great out of our shimmer cardstock as well. And there you can see that vellum layered on top of the white cardstock. So the white cardstock is adding the color to the shine marks. And I also love layering lots of layers of vellum, white cardstock, shimmer cardstock, all sorts of fun colors to create really, really cool looks on cards. Another cool thing about the bubble border die is that it's easy to snip the bubbles out so you can have individual bubbles as well. So you can just take your scissors in there and just snip those apart and you'll have lots of cool individual bubbles to play with. Next up, I'm going to show you one of my personal favorite new products, and it's our bubble background stencil. It comes with two stencils, one with less bubbles and one with more, and then they layer together perfectly. So I wanted to show you how these all work together. So here I'm just going to take a piece of cardstock here. This is standard size A2, five and a half by four and a quarter, and we're going to take the ones with less bubbles. And you can see how you can kind of play around with them on your card, depending on where your bubbles you want them to be. You can do portrait, landscape, etc. So I'm just going to kind of layer them on there where I think is pretty. And here I'm just using a little magnet board to hold them in place. You could use some tape to hold your stencil in place as well. And I'm going to use some minty fresh ink and I'm just going to pick up some of that ink with a blender brush and start off of the stencil and move on to it to fill in these bubbles. And I don't worry about being too careful when I do it because I like it when some of the bubbles are lighter or darker than each other, or even when within one bubble, it's a little bit darker on one edge. I think it's what gives it the really, really cool bubble look. So that's what one of the bubble stencils looks like. Now here's the other stencil in the pack, and this one has the more concentrated bubbles. So here I'm going to be using Kitty Pool ink, which is another really great color for these bubbles. And we're going to go ahead and fill all of these guys in. Once again, I'm just kind of doing it random, and that's how I really like how it looks. So that's how it looks with just the individual stencil. So we've got the two different ones we can compare here. And now we're going to take a look and we're going to layer these on top of each other. I personally like to start with the more concentrated bubbles first, and then I'm going to take my less concentrated bubbles and layer them on top. And I like to look through the stencil and layer them so that some of the bubbles are overlapping. That's what I think really gives it a cool, almost bouquet kind of look. So you see I'm moving them around until I think it looks perfect and they're layered the way I would like them to look. And then I'm going to hold it in place once again. And then I'm going to bring on the minty fresh ink just to have a little bit of a different color in my second bubbles, but you can use the same color as well. And how cool does that look? I just adore this look. So next up, we're going to play around with one, a portrait card. So you can do these in any order. You can flip your stencil around. You could have it at the diagonal, whatever look you need for your card. And in this case, we're going to use some different colors because these bubbles, yes, they're great for our bubble mice, but they're perfect for underwater scenes. They're perfect for like a confetti party look, which is kind of what I was going for here by combining pink and blue. I also cannot wait to use these for snow as well. So I love that they can be bubbles, underwater scenes, confetti, snow, kind of your imagination is a limit. I can't wait to see what you guys end up doing with it. So here you can see the bubbles used on their own and then layered on top of each other. So all of the looks work depending on what you're going for in your card. The layered one is in the center there. And then here's a comparison of two layered ones, portrait and landscape, and also bringing in an unexpected color. 
Now it's finally time to start making cards with these products. And we're gonna be making three different cards in this video today. And here I'm gonna show you a kind of quick trick here for creating an ink blended sky. I'm starting with some mermaid cardstock and using Distress Oxides. By starting with a colored cardstock, it already gives me my color base. So I'm not having to fill in an entire white cardstock with color. And I really love doing this. So we did some peacock feathers and then we're going to be doing some mermaid lagoon. And when I got to this point here, I thought, ah, it's not quite dark enough. And I started adding in some other colors so I brought in some blueprint sketch to kind of darken up the edges. And then here I went back and forth between all of my colors to make sure that I had a nice blend going into that mermaid cardstock and I really really love how that's looking. It's almost kind of like a dusk sky, something like that. Now in this case I'm going to be doing something a little bit different with my bubble stencil. I'm going to be using some white pigment ink which is our Yeti ink in these stent bubbles and they look incredible over the ink blended sky. So there you can see I'm just using a blender brush, you could use a foam ink blending tool and I'm going to bring on that Yeti ink kind of in a slow motion there because it is a very thick kind of more wet ink and so I'm going to bring that in over each of these bubbles creating a really really cool look. There's something about that Yeti ink on top of the distress oxide or on top of colored cardstock that looks really really pretty. So there it is with one stencil. You can see I'm checking it out to see how I like it. And then now I'm going to bring in the less concentrated one. And once again I'm going to look through that stencil and line it up so that I have some of those bubbles overlapping because I think that's what gives it the really really cool look. So once I have it in perfect placement I can hold it in place uh, with either the magnets or some tape and then we're going to go in again with the white Yeti ink and go over each of the bubbles. And I don't worry if some of the bubbles are lighter or darker than each other. I think it looks really cool depending having them kind of change back and forth. So I really love doing this. Once again it's great over Distress Oxide but also this looks really cool just on plain colored cardstock. I just couldn't help myself because I love an ink blended sky. So there you can see how some of the bubbles are darker than others. This also gives you an idea of how pretty this would look with snow. So right here I have some shimmer cardstock. I'm going to layer onto a standard size card base five and a half by four and a quarter. And then we're going to start working with the bubble border die and we're going to work with that base border die first and we're going to die cut that from some really pretty shimmer cardstock. So I've got my base here now and I'm going to kind of play around. I cut the full length of it so I'm going to see what I think is going to look nice on a card. And once I have it in good placement for my card I'm just going to make a little pencil mark and then just trim off the excess. Next, I'll die cut the bubble border die there, the main bubble piece. We're gonna die cut that from some pearlescent vellum cardstock. Any kind of vellum shimmery cardstock would look so pretty for this. And we're gonna glue this onto the card base. Now, this is a fun little trick. I'm using the glue tube and making tiny little dots of glue. Then I'm gonna take my finger and I'm gonna pat, pat, pat that glue. What ends up happening is it spreads out the glue enough that it makes it not visible through the pearlescent vellum or a normal vellum, but it makes it tacky enough to still stick to your cardstock. So that's a really good trick for layering vellum onto cardstock. Uh, it's a nice way for your glue not to show. Then I'm just gonna trim off any excess of the bubbles. And then we're gonna work with that other bubble layer and we're gonna layer that on top. And we're gonna do the same trick with tiny little dots of glue from the glue tube. And then we're gonna pat, pat, pat that glue until you really can't see any of those marks. It's gonna still be tacky enough to stick to your card, but it's gonna keep that glue from kind of smearing through and showing through your vellum. So I'm just kind of playing around, kind of seeing how this is gonna look nice. I'm kind of offsetting those bubbles. And then we can just trim off anything that's hanging off of the edges. I want it to look like these bubbles are kind of piling up at the bottom of the card and that maybe there's even more bubbles beyond the scene. So I'm gonna trim this off right at the end of the bubbles, trimming off some of the edges of them because I feel like that's gonna make it look like the bubbles just keep on going. I'll add some foam tape for some dimension and we'll layer that onto the card base. For this card, of course, we're gonna be using Bubbles of Joy, but we're also gonna be using Scripty Bubble Sentiments. Now, we're gonna feature that in a video in a couple of days, but I thought it would be fun to use that on this card because I love how those two stamp sets go together. So we're gonna take that cute little guy. I love him so much because he looks a little worried that he's floating on the bubble, right? So I'm gonna layer him onto that big bubble and then I'm gonna layer my word smile that I've colored in the same way that we colored the bubbles in with the pinks and the purples. Um, in this case, I decided to stick to our pink, purple, blue bubbles because I thought it went really well with our blue background. 
Then we're gonna take that whole background and layer it onto that card base that has the shimmer cardstock, which I think just makes those white background bubbles that were stenciled kind of just pop even more. I think it's just so pretty. And then we're gonna start creating our scene with all of these bubbles and mice. One thing I really love about this set is they're, even though they're tiny images, tiny bubbles, tiny mice, we have so many of them that you can really fill in a whole card. I'll be showing you some design team cards at the end that are slimline cards that are also completely filled in with these bubbles. They look just so cool. So I'm gonna layer my word smile there in the center and then my cute little bubble mouse that he's kind of floating up on the bubble. Then we've got our guy that's kind of running, creating a trail and we're gonna give him his bubble wand and layer things on here. On this card, I'm doing some things with foam squares and some things flat so that there's nice dimensions so that it looks like some bubbles are in the background and some are in the foreground. I think that looks really nice with our really cool stencil bubbles in the background too. We'll keep filling in the scene with more of these little bubbles. I'm just kind of layering them around and adding some of those little pops as well, I think gives a really, really cool look. And then now the card is all done. That bubble background is so pretty. I love the bubble border in this stamp set. Oh my gosh, I think it might be one of my favorites. I wanted to show you kind of a bigger version than I made earlier too. So I love that you can kind of play around with different colors and different sizes. And these cards are so much fun to make. I just adore these mice. Now next up, the amazing Shari is gonna take us through two different cards, a really adorable card and an interactive card too. So take it away, Shari. So I'm starting today's card with Bubbles of Joy by using the River Rock ink to stamp out all my images. So this is a gray ink, but this is Copic friendly. So I can color all these images with my Copic markers. And this just gives them a unique look having that gray ink instead of the dark black ink. So you can see I've colored all my little mice here with a gray and I've colored in my bubbles with a light blue and I'm just touching their ears and their nose with a pink color. I'm going to be using some of the perfectly plaid remix papers. I'm going to pick out this paper here that has the green and the blue and that's going to be the background for my card. So I've cut it out with the largest stitched rectangle. I've also cut a panel of mermaid cardstock with a stitch rectangle and a piece of white cardstock with that same stitch rectangle. And now I'm using that stitched hillside border, the simple stitched hillside border, to cut the top of this white piece. So this is going to end up being the ground for my little scene that I'm going to create. I decided to ink blend the grass so that I got some different tones in the grass, but you could also cut this from some green cardstock as well. But I'm just going in with some twisted citron distress ink and I'm pulling that ink from the edges toward the bottom. So you can see how you get that nice darker green along the edge and then it's a bit lighter towards the bottom. So it just kind of gives you some different shading. So once I've got this grass looking the way I want it, I am going to put this panel into my Misty. I'm going to use my magnet to hold my grass at the bottom just as a placeholder so I can see the spacing on this panel. And then I am going to stamp my sentiment onto that mermaid cardstock. So you can see that I'm pulling out some of the images that I'm going to use and putting them where I want them to be so that I can make sure that my sentiment is in the right place. So I've got that big bubble up at the top left, and then I was just making sure that my little mouse that's gonna be on the bottom doesn't crowd my sentiment. So I'm just gonna pick that up with the door of the Misty. I'm gonna ink it up with some black ink and stamp it right onto that background. Now the reason I'm stamping this first is because I'm going to do some stenciling using the bubble background stencil. And I've just put a little bit of removable adhesive on the back of this panel. I've put it on my Make Art Station. And I'm just going to use this one stencil because it has this nice space in the middle that's kind of blank with no bubbles. And this sentiment is going to fit in there perfectly. So this is going to allow me to have bubbles all around my sentiment, but not covering up my sentiment in any way. And once I've got it placed the way I want it, you can see I'm kind of shifting it around to see what the bubbles are going to look like on the background. And then I'll just use the magnets that come with the art station to hold it in place. 
Now you could ink through this stencil, which I will show you in another card. But for me, I'm going to make some glittery bubbles. So I'm using some transparent texture paste. And then I'm going to add glitter to it. So I'm basically making my own custom glitter paste. So I'm just going to get a little bit of that onto my palette knife here. And I'm just going to evenly spread it into those bubbles that are on my cardstock. The thing I really like about this paste is it's very smooth to get into those spaces because you don't have the glitter or any grit, so it's really easy to apply. So I'll just scrape off any excess. And then I'm going to carefully remove my stencil. So I'm going to move those magnets and pick this directly up and you can see where that paste is from those bubbles and I'm going to move that station out of the way. I've got a coffee filter here and I'm going to use some Prisma glitter and I'm just going to dump it all over this background and it's going to stick to that paste. I'm going to tap off the extra, give it a little flick, and you can see we have this beautiful glittery bubble. So I'll just set that aside to dry, and then I make sure that I go and immediately go wash off my stencil so that doesn't dry on there. Now to work on my card, I've got that piece of plaid paper that I cut with that stitch rectangle. I'm going to add that to a card base. That's going to be my background. Now that my paste is dry and my glitter is nice and stuck down, I can add my green grass to the bottom. And I'm using liquid glue because it is going over some of those glittery bubbles. It does cover up a couple of them. I'm going to add this cute little guy that's floating on top of the bubble. I just think he is so adorable. I think this would be me. I'd get caught with the bubble and kind of be stuck there on my stomach. And he's going to go up towards the top up here. I've got this little guy here that's going to go towards the bottom and then I also want to add the bubble wand to the mouse that is blowing the bubbles. So I'm just going to add a tiny dot of glue to the wand and just pick that up with the little hand of the mouse. So now I'm just placing things around to make sure I like the way they look and I like the spacing of all the images. And then I've also got some small bubbles that I colored and cut out and I'm just going to sprinkle those around. And I like the look of the white bubbles that are colored with the glittery bubbles that look more transparent. I just think that's really fun. And the other one to the side I actually end up adding layered over top the big one right towards the end. I also like the look of these sort of going off the edge of the panel. So that's why I kind of moved that one up towards the top. You can see my little mouse is going up off the top edge of this panel. And I've decided that I want to pop him up with some foam squares. So you can see I'm only putting the squares on the bubble because he kind of goes past the edge of the cardstock up there. This one I'm also adding a little foam square to, but I'm still making sure that it kind of goes off the edge because I really like that look. I've got some more of those little teeny tiny bubbles. And then for my other little mice down here on the ground, I'm going to add some foam squares to them as well so they have some dimension. So now I'm going to add a few of the little stamps. So there's this little stamp with the bubble popping. There's two in this set. This is the small one. And then I also am going to stamp the tiny little word that says pop because I just think that is so adorable. So I've stamped both of those in the same River Rock ink, that gray ink. I've added some foam tape to the back of my panel. And then I'm just going to center it up onto my card base where I've already added that plaid. So to finish off my card, I am going to make these white bubbles that are cut from cardstock match my glitter bubbles a little bit more by using my glitter pen and just adding a little bit of glitter to one side of the bubbles. I just think that this ties all those bubble 
images together a little bit better. And then of course I'm using that one little bubble, I did not forget it, and I added a little foam square to it. And I like how it overlaps the big one and I think it adds a little more balance to the scene. And then here is my finished card and I just love that glitter in the background with those bubbles and I think those mice are just so adorable. So for this card, I'm going to be creating a pull tab card using the Bubbles of Joy stamp set. But first, I want to create my background, and I'm going to be using the bubble background stencils to do this. These two stencils have the circles creating all the bubbles, and they're in different places, so you can layer them together using different colors to get kind of a dimensional look. So I'm going to be inking through this stencil. I'm going to be using two different colors of ink. I'm going to start with mermaid ink for the first layer of bubbles. And I've just put this onto my little art station here with some removable adhesive on the back of the cardstock to hold it in place. And then I'm using the magnets to hold my stencil down. And I'm tapping off my ink on that scrap piece of paper on the side just so that I don't have quite as much on my brush and I don't get it too dark. I want these to look nice and light like bubbles. So now you can see how these bubbles are looking with that mermaid ink. And then I can remove that stencil and I'm going to set it aside. And I'm going to take the other one and you can see all the little bubbles are in a totally different place. So you can shift this around and some will layer over the other bubbles, some will not, some will be on their own. And you get this fun look with the different colored bubbles. Now for my card, I'm using two colors of blue or aqua, but I think this would be fun to layer two totally different colors. So I'm actually doing the mint green ink for my other one so that they're still in the green blue family, but they're different colors of ink, enough to where you can tell a difference. So I'm just making sure I hit all those little openings you can see I've moved my magnet out of my way there just to make sure I got that one at the bottom and make sure I have enough room for this one on the side. And then I can remove those magnets and you can see my layered bubble look for the background. I think this would also be fun to layer some glitter with one or some paste with one. Now I'm also adding a little bit of sponge sugar distressing very, very lightly to the edges of this background. And I just thought that this created a little more interest to it, gave it a little pop of color and defined the edges a little bit more. So we don't have just this white card base. So this is very, very light handed and a very, very light pink. So now I'm gonna work on the part that's gonna go at the bottom of my card. So I have a piece of peacock cardstock. It is cut to four and a quarter wide, which is the same width as my card. And I'm just going to stamp my sentiment down at the bottom first. And this way I can see the spacing of my sentiment before I die cut the top of this. So I'm using the sentiment that says, when life gives you troubles, blow bubbles, which I just think is so much fun. And I'm just going to stamp this in a black ink. I'm going to be cutting the top of this using the bubble border die, which has two pieces. This is the first piece that cuts the bubbles. So I have a piece of mermaid cardstock here cut to that same width, four and a quarter. And I'm just going to cut my bubbles first from this mermaid cardstock. So it will actually already be trimmed to the right width and I won't have to trim it off the edge of my card, but you could cut this from a full piece and then trim the edges if you like. So you can see here how that's gonna line up above my sentiment and then I'm gonna take this die that comes with the bubble border and it just cuts the top edge and I'm gonna line that up with my bubbles and tape it down and run it through my die cut machine so that I have that peacock cardstock cut to that same edge as my bubbles. Now, you could cut this first and cut a long strip of your bubbles and line it up and trim it off. I was just using a nice piece of scrap paper that I already had cut to the right width, 
but you don't have to worry about lining it up the way I'm doing because you can easily do that and trim off the edges. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of liquid glue and just layer that right over that peacock. And you can see how that peacock, because it's cut with the same dye that matches the bubbles at the top, you don't see it at the top, but it fills in the shine marks on the bubbles very nicely. So this is gonna be the bottom of my card and the base of my card. So I've got this little guy and he's floating inside of a bubble. I've already stamped and colored and cut him out. And he's the part that's going to move on my card. So I'm just gonna mark with my pencil right where the top of that bubble border falls. And that'll give me the placement to cut the little slot for the pull tab. So I'm just lining up my little slot die with my pencil mark. And then to make sure it's nice and straight, I'm trying to line it up with my grid mat, but I actually figured that the best way to do this would be to use my T-square. So I'm gonna put a little bit of tape to hold it in place. And I think it's pretty straight, but I'm gonna take my T-square ruler, put that against the top of my paper, and just line it up against my die. And now I can make sure that it is nice and straight. So I'll just run that through my die cut machine and it's gonna cut my slot for me. You can see I've already cut the pull tab part out of some Peacock cardstock, but first I'm going to cut the little notch at the top. So I'm going to use my T-square ruler again and mark the top so it lines up with the slot. And on my die, you can see I've marked with a marker the center of that pull tab and it just helps me line it up with my grid mat or whatever marks I'm making on my card. So I've lined that up. I'm gonna hold it in place with a little bit of tape and run that through my die cut machine. It's just snug to the top of that piece of cardstock. And then that's gonna cut my little tab with that nice stitching detail around it. So I'm going to fold my pull tab mechanism fold it in and then back out. And before I put it in the card, I'm gonna trim it down a little bit because it's a little bigger than my bubble. So it's kind of hard to see here just cause the colors kind of match my cutting mat, but I'm just tracing the edges of the bubble. And then I'll just take my scissors and I'm gonna cut it a little further in than where my pencil mark is. But this way, I'll make sure that all of this tab is hidden behind the bubble with the mouse. So I'm just trimming off all four corners. And now I know that it will hide behind my mouse nicely when it's closed. So nothing is going past that bubble. So I can fold those little pieces in and slide it through the slot and then open those back up. I'm lining up the top of that tab with the notch that I cut at the top. And I'm just gonna hold it in place with a little piece of tape. So now I can glue my bubble onto my tab. I'm just gonna use a little bit of liquid glue to hold him right on the tab. And I only put that little piece of tape to hold it in place so it didn't shift around while I was assembling my pieces. Now I can test that it moves up and down perfectly. Look how cute that is, that little mouse floating in the bubble up and down. And then now I'm gonna add one of the little stabilizer pieces. So I just cut these from white cardstock and I'm folding it on the score lines. I'm gonna add a little bit of adhesive to that middle section because that's gonna go onto the back of this card panel. I'm just gonna slide it right underneath, stick that down, and then I can add some adhesive to the little flap that folds over, and then I'll just fold that other one around making a little sleeve for that to slide in. So I went ahead and trimmed off that excess that was sticking out the top and now I can add the little tab that tells you to pull. It has that little arrow and I've just cut that from some mermaid cardstock. So I'm gonna layer that over the top of the tab where I trimmed it. So 
So now I have added some foam tape all over the back of this panel, making sure to avoid my tab you can see there. And now I can add this to my card base. So adding that foam will just give some room in the back for that pull tab to move around. It won't pinch it between the layers of cardstock too much. And then for the bubble border piece that I created earlier, I'm adding some foam to that as well. And I'm gonna line that up along the bottom. So you can see this little guy is sort of floating on top of that bubble border, and then he floats up when you pull the tab. So now to add some of the other images that I have, I have the bottle of the bubbles. I have the little bubble one that is in the shape of a heart, which I just think is so much fun. And then of course I have this little mouse blowing the bubbles with a wand. And I'm going to use a foam square to help pop that one up so that it looks like it's sitting on top of the bubble border. So I've just put a foam square at the top and then I'll just add liquid glue to the bottom where it touches that bubble border. And I'll do the same to the little mouse that's gonna go on the other side. I just think this one's so cute kind of running on top of the bubbles. So I felt like this card needed a little bit extra towards the top and I decided to pull in some of that pink that I used for those images at the bottom, the bottle and the wand that's shaped like a heart. And I'm going to add the bunting border to the top. So I've cut this from some narwhal cardstock and I'm just going to layer it across the top. You can see that I've gone ahead and I've pulled the tab all the way up so I know how far my bubble goes up. And this will help me with the placement of this bunting. And once I have that glued down, I'll just trim off those pieces that are hanging over the edge. And I've cut my little flags that go on this banner from some guava cardstock and some raspberry cardstock because I thought it would be fun to have the two shades of pink and it pulls in the pinks that I have at the bottom again. So I'm just going to alternate between the lighter and the darker as I go across the card. And I just think that these little flags really add something to the card and kind of finished off that space towards the top. And then finally, because I can't seem to make bubbles without a little bit of glitter, I'm adding some stickles to just some of those stenciled bubbles in the background. Not all of them, just a few. Just to add a little glimmer and some interest. And I just think this card is so adorable with that little mouse floating in the bubble. I'm going to add a little bit of glitter to him as well so that he matches his surroundings. And I just think that pull tab is a super fun surprise when you pull that tab and that little mouse floats up in his bubble. It's just so cute. I just love these cards so much, Shari. Thank you so much. And now we are so excited to show you guys some incredible cards by the design team. First up, we have a gorgeous card by Tammy. I love her bold coloring on the bubbles and that giant bubble that she created in the background using a stitch circle is genius. This card by Elena is so pretty. I love the soft colors and her cool rainbowy bubbles. I love how Elise created a slimline card and she pulled in some speech bubbles as well. So speech bubbles in this set go together perfectly. And this card by Megan, oh my gosh, it is rainbow perfectness. I love it so much. Here, Lynette created the cutest card. I love her die cut bubble border out of mermaid cardstock. It's so pretty. And this card by Yanea. Oh my goodness, look at this blended background. I can't wait to learn up to make a background just like that. And I love how she cut apart the bubbles in the bubble border to create a cool scene. Tammy here combined some other brand new stamp sets you guys will be seeing soon with our cute little bubble mice in a really cool slimline scene. 
Grace created a center picture window card. When you open this card up, you get the coolest three-dimensional scene. I love those little bubbles going around in the park. And then this is so cute with Marie, and I love how instead of it being blowing bubbles, they've got the really cool bath time bubbles. And then this card by Audrey. Oh my goodness, how beautiful and unique is it to use colored pencils on black cardstock with this set? I love it. Kara has given the cute little mouse a no-line coloring look, and I think it makes it look like a storybook. It's so pretty. And this card by Letitia is so fun. I love her bubble background and how she framed her scene with a stitched rectangle frame. This card is so cool by Callie. She used the bubble border cut over and over to help fill in her portrait slimline card. And then this card by Mindy is so fun. I love how she used glitter gel in the bubble background stencil. It looks incredible. And then here, this card by Shari is so fun. It goes to show that our bubbles are great for cute bath time scenes and ducks. You can really get creative with these guys. So we cannot wait to see what you guys create with all of these new products. Oh my gosh, I know it's gonna be amazing. Thank you so much for watching today and I hope you guys have an absolutely amazing day. Bye. Thank you.